Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back to the Possum Stamps YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing this really fun ink blended Valentine's Day slimline card. So we're going to be using a few different stamps from the Sweet Cupcake stamp set. And the card stock I'm starting out with is a card base, which is seven inches by eight inches. We're going to pretend that this pink layer is going to be actually black cardstock and you'll see why in a little bit but that measures three and a half by eight which is going to be the end size of our card and the white cardstock that I'm going to be ink blending and heat embossing onto which is where we're starting our whole project today um, that measures three and a quarter by seven and three quarters so that way we have a really nice thin border all the way around at the end once we're done all of our ink blending i do end up trimming it down just a little bit more but that is at least where i started out my plan so you can see i took this dangling heart um, stamp and i am using some embossing ink and you can see that there's a little bit of residual ink left over on my stamp. I cleaned the stamp multiple times and no matter what I did, I could not get that little bit of gray to go away. But because I'm using white embossing powder, it really didn't matter. So I just kept going. <laughs> if that ever happens to you, um, just make or you're concerned about it happening, I would say just make sure that you're using white embossing powder and not clear. And then and it'll be fine. Everything will be fine. So I'm going in in between each line with my anti-static powder tool and just making sure that my impression is going on really well so that way my powder, as much as I can help it, just sticks to my stamped areas. You'll see once I do my ink blending, there's a couple little spots where the white got uh, in some places I wasn't planning, but I was able to cover most of it up with my stamped images at the end. And I really like how it turned out anyway. So I literally just worked my way all the way down the panel doing one line after the other. And it looks kind of boring now, but once we go in and add these oxide inks, it is going to pop like crazy. So I'm starting off with seedless preserves and I'm just picking up my ink on a new blending tool the way that I'm going to lay it down. So I'm picking it up in circular motions because I'm going to be laying my product down in circular motions. Just like if you're inking up a stamp, you press it up and down because you stamp up and down. So that's something to keep in mind, whether it's for um, art or makeup or anything like that. It's something that I've learned in my life's journey is that you always want to pick up your product the way you're planning to put it down onto your surface. So. There's your fun fact for the day. Um, so I moved from Seedless Preserves to the Lumberjack Plaid, which is that beautiful bold red right in the center. And then my last color is going to be Worn Lipstick. In my head, this color was going to end up more of a cool tone pink, like the pink cardstock that I had picked. But in reality, it's a little more coral and I do love how it looks and I love the way how it um, blends into that lumberjack plaid. So I have no regrets about using it, but this is the color that made me rethink my cardstock choice and the reason that I ended up going with just the black cardstock to create that really beautiful matte. So once I had my ink blending done, I went over my whole, um, my whole panel with a dry paper towel really lightly and it just helps to take the little bit of extra ink off of the surface of your heat embossing. So now I'm trimming an additional quarter inch from the top and one of the sides and now this is where it's occurring to me that those pinks don't match and that might not matter to you. You might like how that looks, more power to you, but it bothered me. <laughs> so I uh, swapped in a black panel instead. So this is me trimming everything down. I, I'd already adhered my pink panel to my card base. So I just quickly made a new card base seven by eight and scoring at three and a half uh, and just making sure I get a really nice fold in that card so that it holds up really well. Um, I do like to use a 110 pound card stock which is nice because it gives a really great feel to the card and makes it a little more durable, but it also does make it harder to photograph <laughs> because you have to tape it shut because it doesn't want to crease because it's so strong. Um, so 
I decided to go ahead and add a sentiment to the inside of my card, which is not something that I always do, but I am constantly trying to remind myself to do it and get better at it. So I added the Happy Valentine's Day on the inside and I wanted to give it a pop of color. So I ended up stamping it with that same Lumberjack plaid ink that I used before. Distress oxides are something that you can stamp with, not just ink blend with, and they stamp pretty well. So I set that aside to dry, and I also use the same ink for a sentiment strip for the front of my card. I am stamping out the sweets for my sweet from the stamp set onto just a scrap of white cardstock that I had left over from trimming down my card panel. And I'm going to just trim off the edges. And then my stamped image is going to be this domed cake case, as well as this really sweet cupcake that has the little heart embellishments on it. And it has to be a chocolate frosting cake, obviously. So I am starting off by stamping down my cupcake. Then I'm going to take a full stick post-it note and I'm going to stamp my image again. And I'm just going to fussy cut the wrapper out. I didn't really pay attention to the top part because that dome lid is going to not touch that. I just wanted to make sure that that bottom circle of the dome um, plate that the cupcake is sitting on would appear to be behind the cupcake. So I masked up the bottom. I'm inking up my stamp with black ink and then I'm going to stamp off once onto just a piece of printer paper. And then when I go in to put my stamp down that second time, it's going to give me a much softer look more on the gray side, which is really going to help me sell the fact that this is supposed to be a clear glass case. So to color this up, Normally, I like to go with like BG uh, markers, something in the teals, but with the color scheme that I had going on with my ink blending, I decided to try something different and go with some BV markers, and I absolutely love how this turned out. So I went in with the BV01, BV000, and then BV quadruple zero. And I just think it gives the most beautiful shading. It's still very light. It still helps to play up that translucent feel. Um, and it ties in so beautifully with the purple, red, and pink background. Um, I'm definitely going to be remembering this color combination for glass objects in the future because I really just loved how it turned out. So I like to add a little bit of shading on either side and then definitely under the object that's on the plate. Um, and then my favorite thing to do is adding those little touches to like the little ball at the top um, just by adding in that curved C shape and kind of blending it out. So I made it a vanilla cupcake and then to color in my frosting, I'm adding my deepest shades to the bottom part of each layer where the frosting would kind of curve under before the next layer starts and then going in with a medium shade and then just keeping my lightest shade up on the highlight for each part of that swirl and then I went in with some red tones that I thought would match that lumberjack plaid really well just to help again try to tie everything in together and make the whole piece feel as cohesive as possible so I went in with just some light shading towards the outer edges with my darkest red, keeping the lighter section in the middle. And then I decided to do kind of a metallic silver wrapper. That was my idea for the cupcake wrapper. So I went in with my cool gray markers, adding shading on either side of these kind of cupcake ribs that are created by these papers. And the first time that I did this, I felt like I added too much of my lightest color and it really washed out all of my contrast. So now I'm just going back in with some of the medium marker just really heavily and then just doing one tiny little flick with the light marker to make sure it's still blended. But that brought back a lot of that contrast that I was missing. So I used the coordinating die cut to cut out my cupcake and then it was time to start assembling. So I used some liquid glue to adhere my ink blended panel down flat and I, because that was flat, I wanted to use some really thin foam tape to pop up my cupcake and my sentiment. I also did this because I knew I wanted to bring in some of the peppermint um, sequin mix I was torn between Dreamy Days and the Peppermint Sequin Mix, but Peppermint won me over. Dreamy Days is a fan favorite of mine, but I just really love the extra red sparkle that the Peppermint brought. So 
I am adding down the cupcake and the dome lid and you can see I'm being really mindful about where I'm placing it because I did have those little heat embossed speckles that this is now covering up in that area where the pink transitions from the red on my ink blending. And then to add a little bit of height and help spread the love across the card, I added my sentiment up towards the top. Then it was time to go and sprinkle in some sequins. This did take me a little bit of time just to kind of get in the groove of where I wanted everything to go. So I spared you most of the process of me kind of fiddling around with these. And once I was happy with where they were going, I just went in with liquid glue and um, stuck them down nice and easy. I just love adding a little bit of sparkle and shine with these sequin mixes. I ended up going with the peppermint sequin mix. I was leaning towards the dreamy days which you see all off there to the left but I just love how the white and reds popped against this color scheme and I thought it was fun to use a Christmassy product in a different way. Kind of my MO I know. So make sure that you are following Possum Stamps all over on Instagram as well for even more inspiration. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing week and happy crafting.